Welcome back to The Breakdown. Today, I'm gonna be talking about what exactly is Intel hyperthreading. Everybody mentions it, everybody talks about it, but what is it? Well, today I'm going to be talking about it and explaining it to you guys in as much detail as I can. But before we get on into the video, I want to remind you to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more awesome content every single freaking day of the week. We put in work here, we upload daily for you guys, so we would love it if you returned that favor by sharing the video with your friends, it means the world, and getting them to subscribe. But how does hyper-threading work on an Intel processor? Well, it can can be kind of complicated. So I'm gonna boil it down to the simplest terms I can. I might be over explaining things for some of you and I might be under explaining things for some of you and if you have any specific questions let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them. Basically in the most basic form hyper threading means that for every one physical processing core the operating system and the software that's there recognizes two logical or virtual processing cores. It then shares the workload between both of those cores, the basically real one and the virtual one, or really two virtual cores that is one physical processing core. That's what allows a dual core processor to have four cores when you look at it on your computer, and it's also what means a nine core processor can have eight total cores via hyper threading here. That is flipping insane. What this does is allow for scheduling of two processes per physical core. Thus, you can get more done and it allows for things like video editing to have the next frame already processed and ready to go before you even get to it because the processor knows that's coming up next. This is great for multi-threaded workloads like video editing, 3D rendering, and just heavy multitasking on your computer. For example, having Spotify, your email, Chrome, and a video game up all at the same time or even live streaming a video game where you're going to have something like XSplit up and the game itself two big things that can benefit from multi-core hyper-threading. And that's why hyper-threading doesn't always mean you're gonna get double performance. There are some single-core workloads that will not benefit from hyper-threading, and in cases like that, it's not going to see any performance boost. But in modern PCs, generally, hyper-threading is great, and it can allow for double the performance most of the time. All right, so I'm gonna get a little bit techy and go in-depth with what hyper-threading really is. That's the basics of it. That's what I've just explained. Explain. But what is the in-depth explanation? Well, really, hyper-threading lets you queue up tasks quicker by increasing the number of independent instructions in the pipeline, on which multiple instructions operate on separate data in parallel. An example of this goes back to video editing and having that next frame ready to go before the last frame is even finished. That's what hyperthreading allows to do. Boom, 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 boom. Quick scheduling back to back to back with no time in between each one. There's no processing time because this one's ready. When this one finishes instantly, it's ready to go. Bam, 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 bam. And that's what hyperthreading allows you to do. And that's the real benefit of efficiency. And that's why it doesn't matter for single core operations and only for things that benefit from multi-core processing. Now what about when you're buying a processor? Should you buy one with or without hyper-threading? Well, overall, if budget's not an option, the more cores you can get, the better. If you can get an 18-core i9, go with it. But it's going to have hyper-threading as well, and most of Intel's lineup has hyper-threading because it's generally a good thing. It cannot hurt 99% of workloads, and because of that, get it if you can. If budget is a huge option, don't get it, but even the Pentium processors from Intel, the dual core Pentiums have hyper-threading now. It is hard to find a non-server processor or a non-very specific workstation processor that doesn't have hyper-threading. So if you're looking to game, if you're looking for just general performance or even just general working on a computer, get a processor with hyper-threading these days. There's no reason not to. And there is some debate out there as to whether if this actually truly doubles core count and gives you double the amount of performance. And overall, I don't think it does because you have to consider single thread workloads in there as well. But on multi-core workloads, over and over again, hyper-threading has proven that it can double performance or very near to double performance. So again, you might as well get it. That's what hyper-threading does. It allows tasks to queue up faster in order to get more processing done with just one physical processing core. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more awesome tech content where I explain pretty complicated 
complicated things like hyper-threading, and some non-complicated things like what an IP address is. You'll find it all here in addition to PC build guides and all of that awesome stuff. So nevertheless, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. My name is Nick, and I'm out, guys. Peace.